is going on, you guys? Welcome back to another podcast here. I got a quick little sit down with Nate Belmar. How are you doing, brother? Doing phenomenal. Yourself? Good, good, good. So Nate, obviously, is one of the kings of biohacking, and I wanted to have him on today because a lot of people that have been uh, on my channel are more like entrepreneurs and more like finance stuff, but of course, your health is just as important, and you've been able to go ahead and go from unhealthy to now being healthy, and now you're helping other people learn how to do that themselves. Um, and I've watched your content a lot, of course, as your brother. And, uh, you know, we were talking earlier off camera about some of the stuff that I'm doing good and bad. Yeah. Like microwaving. My we, sh we should address some of those things, to be yeah. honest. You call me out. Call me out. All right. So, let, let's, I mean, let's start off with the common things that, because people, here's the thing. People think biohacking is like this esoteric knowledge. And really, it's not. It's just like reverse engineering, like how your body works and then trying to hack it so you don't have to waste so much time and trying to optimize your health. Um, so I think it's also being a student and learning from different people, different things, and then applying it to your body and seeing if it works. Mm -hmm. Because here's the thing, and this is what I've learned personally. Um, if you listen to the crowd and you have that crowd mentality and you just go with the popular consensus, like drinking tap water, like it's normal. Now, like, I feel like the pendulum is swinging towards the other side because there is more awareness. But back in the day, bro, you're an outlier. Like, you're dumb. Like, you're, you're wasting money on water bottles. And I'm saying from personal experience, because I did drink a lot of tap water. We all have, bro. Yeah. Been there, done that, don't want to do that again. Have you seen those pipes on social media or no? You post them on Twitter a lot, yeah, and shit's really gross. It's so bad. Yeah. It's so bad. So, let's, let's address a few other things. Okay, okay. Um, Teflon, Forever Chemicals. Most people cook with that all the time. We all know it's bad. Um... What did we address that was a good like alternative or suggestion like from Teflon? Uh, cast iron. Cast iron. That was like the main thing for cooking and stuff. Cast iron, glass, because we also don't want to waste a bunch of time either like in the kitchen. It's just about optimization as well. Yeah, I don't know why I never thought of this before. But we were talking about you know, how I'm, I have like stuff meal prepped. I have someone that makes my meals and I currently store them in like plastic containers. And, you know, that's not... That's not optimal. Ideal. Yeah. And, and most people, yeah, it's, you put it, because think about it. The food's hot. You put it in that plastic vessel. Then the microplastics seep in. And then people go and zap it in the microwave. So it's just like. That's me. Yeah. I mean, dude, we've all done it. But it's like zapping. It's like basically just putting matter into your body. But there's no true substance because everything is getting zapped. Yeah, you broke that down. You said like all like the minerals and stuff is like. Well, yeah, you're getting you're zapping a lot of it. You're literally zapping everything, putting it into the microwave. So it's, yeah. And I don't know why I never thought of it, but you brought it to my attention. Instead of doing the microwave stuff, you guys can put it in the oven. Of course, not the plastic in the oven, but like put the food in like glass or um, anything besides plastic. Really, I mean, I probably recommend glass. And instead of putting it in a microwave for like two, three, four minutes, however long you put it in there for, start a timer, put it in a glass container with some, uh, like bone broth, right? I think bone broth is good because you get all the juices so the meat's not as dry. Yeah, yeah. So do that, put it in the oven for 40 minutes or so, and then your food won't be zapped. Zapped, I mean, it doesn't, dude, it, you can do it way shorter. In 20, 30 minutes, yeah. it's already there. Put the timer, come back. You already have warm food. So, yes, it's not instant. It's not three, four minutes. But you know that you are getting the nutritional value and profile from the food that you need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, it's just like literally sticking to the basics. I know. I know. It's, I just feel like we've been so programmed, like growing up for convenience. And naturally, humans are just trying to like seek the least or the path of least resistance. And Which honestly, makes sense. Because yeah. we're creatures of habit, and then we're also very busy, so whatever seems fast as seems more optimal. Yeah. So I, I get it, because I've, I've been there. It's like getting a frozen food and putting it into the microwave is so much easier than, okay, having to prep the meal and doing all that. Which we discussed it before, like, dude, putting some meat into the oven doesn't take that much time. It doesn't take that much time. It probably takes less than two minutes putting spices and everything, and then you can come back. So it's not really an excuse. And everything is if you're there cooking, making the whole thing. I get that, but that's not the case. That's why you got to get someone to start making meals for you, huh? I agree 100%. <laughs> Especially if they're good. Yeah, you can't be in the kitchen making your own shit. That takes no. way too much time and energy. Especially if you're uh, you know, an up-and-coming entrepreneur. Every, little, every hour counts. 
uh, because anytime that you're spent doing something away from that, um, you're not going to accelerate at the rate that you would if you're putting all your energy into growing. But um, yeah, I mean, I think in the past year and a half, I started really taking my health more serious because about two years ago, two and a half years ago, bro, I was eating Chick-fil-A four to five times a week. Yeah. Like really like all those peanut oils. That too. I was like skinny fat. Like my yeah. face was super bloated. I was just really ugly, to be honest with you. Yeah. And I felt like shit. Like I felt so bad. Um, and I thought I was eating pretty good at the time because my I had no awareness in terms of eating healthy. Like my mom made made good meals when I was younger, um, but I never really liked them. And I think over the past couple of years, I've had to change my diet completely because I never liked eating healthy meals because I thought they tasted nasty. Yeah. And then I had to critique and change some of my you know my dinners, my lunches to actual food I don't mind eating that actually is healthy. And I think that's very important because so many people are like turned off by eating vegetables and like they just don't want to eat all that stuff. They want to eat all the ice cream, uh, all that stuff. Well, it's hyper palatable foods, bro. They spike your food and they put stuff in the food that makes you addicted to it. Yeah. So then when you go and try something natural, organic, you're like, eh, this is not that good. But if you fast and you take time off and then you actually enjoy what nature provides, when you come back and you try the other stuff, you're like, dude, I can't believe I like this candy. This is so gross. This is so sweet. This taste is unnatural. Bro, I was going to say that. Like now if I go and try and eat certain food that I used to eat, I can't eat it. And if you do eat it, you get wrecked. Like your yeah. stomach, you instantly feel it. Like yeah. it's, it's, yeah. So I, I, I tell people, I'm like, just try it. Give it a shot. And when you go back, you're like, yeah, I can't go back. Yeah, you don't want to go back to it because like you said, it's just, it's, it's just nasty. And your body, I've noticed for me personally, I was telling you before, like I can't eat chicken normally like i don't know why yeah but for some reason there's certain foods that i have uh, more of an intolerance for and it seems like it's a certain chemical compound like the, the the chemical compound that makes chicken for whatever reason disagrees with me um and from what i've learned i'm curious to see if you know anything like about like how certain proteins are truly considered more beneficial or healthy for you and i've heard chicken is one of the least healthiest um, I know we were both talking about how we like bison. We prefer bison, uh, turkey perhaps. Um, but yeah, what do you think of that? Lean meat like chicken and turkey, uh, in terms of like the essential amino acid profile, is not as high as something like red beef mm -hmm. or bison. Um, but it's not only that. It's just realizing that perhaps the gym bro conventional diet of like rice and chicken is not the most optimal. Okay. Um, yeah. Like it, my suggestion would be, especially if you're trying to lose weight is trying to cut glucose spike. Right. So there's several ways you can do it. This is one of my tactics that I really enjoy and I really like is mitigating the glucose spike. So if you are going to eat carbohydrates, for example, I tell most people, if you are trying to lose weight, try to cut the carbs, right? Um, to a certain amount for an extended period of time. And then you go reducing it and see how your body feels. Most people just cut it directly, right? They go from one extreme to the other extreme. Yeah. And then they feel that pendulum, that swing, and then they go, their body goes crazy. Because most people are like, you're, you're born, here's a cookie. You're born, here's this, here's that. And your body becomes addicted yeah. to all these carbohydrates. So when you cut them out, your body's like, dude, what happened to me? Where is, where is my sugar? So... You have to like lean off of it, just like you you can lean like people that cut cigarettes after smoking many years. Their body has an adverse reaction to it, so you have to lean off of these substances. So what I suggest people is, if you are trying to lose weight, you want to become metabolically flexible, which basically means your body can tap at just as good as it can tapping into sugar, which most people are sugar burners, as well as it can tap into fat. The issue is most people never get tap into fat because they're always putting some carbohydrate aka sugar into their body that raises the glucose spike and then there's also the process of people talk about glucose spike and glycation aging you faster every time you put something into your body you're working and you are aging faster so you want to try to mitigate that process of the glucose spike and a suggestion to have it's very simple apple cider vinegar i hear you talking about that again. apple cider and people hate the flavor i'm like okay fine you hate the flavor find ways to add different ingredients into the potion or the recipe where the apple cider doesn't taste. You can't taste it. You can put chlorophyll, which is phenomenal, super high in magnesium. I recommend most people get on chlorophyll. And lemon or lime. Um, you squeeze that, 
drink it before your meal, also separating your carbohydrates from your protein, not combining both of them together into the stomach at the same time, separating your beverages from your food. So drink, also drink warm water or room temperature water. Huge hack. Why is that? Because when you put cold water into your system, it's a lot easier for the uh, fat tissue to stay there and act, instead of actually tapping into it. Um, so apple cider vinegar, then carbohydrates, protein, right after that, go for a walk. And then you're reducing glucose spike, glucose spike, triple whammy. So going back to the yeah. glucose spikes and stuff, I actually... I don't, I don't know if I told anyone this. I actually told one person this, I think. But during that period where I was eating unhealthy and not optimizing my health, yeah. I actually, funny enough, did a, a blood test with Gary Brecca uh, with 10X Health. And for whatever reason, you know, I usually get blood work every six to eight months trying to you know, monitor stuff. And on my traditional like, blood panels, they wouldn't read my glucose levels or my insulin levels. But when I did blood work with Gary they did an entire deep dive panel on everything. And during this period of when I was eating unhealthy, I was also trying to bulk and put on weight because most of my life I've been underweight. And I was like, all right, for this period of my life, I'm going to put on some more weight and try to bulk up and, you know, <laughs> get thicker, if you want to call it that. Yeah. Um, but I do blood work with Gary. And then a couple weeks go by, I get my results. And I see I have like this warning sign next to my uh, yeah, I have this warning sign next to my glucose levels um, and my insulin resistance. And it turned out that if I had kept doing what I was doing, which was eating a shit ton of like carbs and simple carbs, or uh, yeah, simple carbs in one sitting, I was on a path to developing type 2 diabetes. Which most people have. Like, yeah. it's literally, it's, it's, Wally's coming to, to the reality. The movie Wally, where we yeah. see all these overweight people flying on spaceships to Mars. I'm not even sure if it's Mars, but with Elon, it's probably going to be Mars. Um, but yeah, bro, type 2 diabetes is on the rise. And it's all, it's, it's the food, bro. It's, you look at photos of people at the beach, people that didn't even work out, people that just live the normal lifestyle. Their body composition and their anatomy was completely different from the people nowadays. And, and, it's, and people are like, oh, bro, like how do you get shredded? And sometimes it's just literally st sticking to what works and actually dialing in on it and letting that effect actually take place. Because most people, when they do something, they do it because they want to see a result. They don't do it because they want to create a lifestyle that's going to benefit them. And when you create a lifestyle that's going to benefit you, you're like, regardless of the outcome or regardless of how I feel, I'm going to stick to the regimen. And then what happens is you create momentum and then that's the momentum that you use and that's the momentum that propels you to the next level. The problem is most people don't hit momentum because they don't see a result. Yeah, they quit before them. And the, the first result you should feel is not even like how you look. Like, dude, I can tell you, if you start fasting and you start cutting seed oils, carbohydrates, things that are going to inflame your body, cause leaky gut, you cut all that out. You will notice a massive difference instantly without having to work out, just going on frequent walks, and you will notice a massive difference. The issue is most people are addicted to food. Like that's the truth. Most people, she, yeah, and it makes sense. But at the end of the day, most people are addicted to food. And it's hyper palatable food that, yeah. Yeah, you mentioned a moment ago like working out. And I just remembered you were saying like yeah. you haven't lifted in a couple months, right? It's like since February, we're in July. That's a long time. It is a long time. Yeah. So why is that? Just giving the body a rest because I'd taken my body composition from being overweight to shredded and then from shredded to clean bulk. And I was just feeling like literally, yo, give me a break. It doesn't mean I wasn't maintaining doing like push-ups here and there like once or twice a week or doing some squats. But I was heavily focused on walking and stretching. Yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> one of the things I've kind of neglected because yeah, I've um, for the longest time I've spent a whole bunch of my time like locked in working on stuff and it's hard to balance everything. It is hard. Like, from my knowledge, it seems like Luke takes care of the financial side for the most part, and you take care of the health side, and you guys are very good at balancing that. Is that correct or incorrect? Not really. Like, we just do our thing. Like, he's actually pretty good at taking care of his health. Like, he'll ask me for tips and, and information. I'll, like, help him with whatever. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah, I mean, since I heard you before saying, like, or you and Luke saying, like, oh, yeah, whenever I'm done eating, I go for, like, a short walk or yeah. whatever, I've noticed that the old brain fog I used to get 
just doesn't happen anymore. Space. Yeah. I mean, it also helps that I've kind of cut out uh, a lot of the carbs I used to eat. I, I feel like now um, I eat more, obviously, high protein and also higher fats, uh, healthier fats. I want to make that clear, <laughs> like uh, avocados and stuff mostly. What do you think of the entire food pyramid that we're so programmed to believe is true? Well, I think... Like the food pyramid. So it's, it's, it's a great question. First of all, you have to look at everything's a business. And most of the food that they suggest is food that can be in warehouses, can be stored for months and months and months. Therefore, there's profit, right? Like you can collect a bunch of grains. You can collect a bunch of cornflakes and leave them sitting there for months and months and months and you're chilling. But a fresh piece of meat, if you don't sell that. So there's a lot of supply chain involved as well. Um, I think it's all, it comes down to lobbying and it comes down to making money and it comes down to propagating the information. And then other people that speak out against it, just shutting them off. It's pretty simple, bro. It's not that complicated. And then the issue in, I get it all the time. People are like, are you pro GMOs or non GMO? And I'm like, non GMO if you have the budget, but if people that are starving in Africa and they don't have anything to eat, dude, like it's probably better for you to be eating something than nothing. Of course. And then do some fasting in between to get rid of those senescent cells. Mitigate it, yeah. yeah. Try and um, make up for it in a way. Yeah. Um, have you been intermittent fasting since you've gotten like more in shape the entire time, or like? For sure. Yeah. But the windows of fasting are completely different. Okay. Um, what like what does that look like for you? Well, it depends. I, I like cycling my fasts. Um, when I was shredding, I I think shredding shredding is a lot easier in terms of like losing weight and getting fit than a clean bulk. Clean bulk requires more time and effort in terms of exertion at whether at the gym or at your house, but you have to put in that strenuous work to what? To destroy the muscle so then it can get so then you can build it. Fasting, walking, biohacking, essential lifestyle hacks doesn't really require physical activity, although I highly suggest it because we all know that having good muscle is literally the organ of youth and it's it's people see it we see it now more than ever people that get old that are frail that don't work out have smaller muscles there and, and it's not only that when you work out you're also putting pressure on the bone so you create bone density so what happens most people when they get 50 or 60 have a fall we all fall but the problem is their body is so frail that the likelihood of them getting a fracture is very high and it's very scary because all you have to do is start looking at the research and seeing the mortality rate within the first year of somebody falling and breaking like a, their tailbone or their hip. It's scary, dude. It happened to my grandfather on my mom's yeah. side. Like yeah. he fell, broke his femur. Yeah. That was it. He was yeah. like bedridden and then he died. Yeah. So fitness, drop it up. Obviously fitness, biohacking. Getting your mindset right, of course, too, is a very important thing because if you don't have your mindset, you don't have anything else, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and really focusing on those three are the key to having a, an abundant life, uh, which I would, I would say is what I'm trying to pursue at all levels at this point in my life from this point onward. Because, you know, every day I'm meeting new people that are doing something a little bit different and I'm like, oh, maybe I can implement that. Some of the stuff we've talked about, I'm like, oh, I'm going to go back and yeah. uh, adapt some of the things I'm currently doing. But um, Nate, I really appreciate you coming on. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I don't want to take up any more time. We're chilling, man. Yeah, and uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little sit down with Nate. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.